Welcome back. Uh, today we are going to uh, look at multiplying and dividing negative decimals. Okay, so when we're doing uh, our negative and our negative uh, decimals through multiplying and dividing, it's important that you know the basic rules with integers and you understand the basic rules with dividing and multiplying the decimals. We will go through the rules of the decimals as we progress through this lesson. As far as the uh, the rules with negatives, let's take a look at that right now. Uh, when I multiply or divide integers, we're going to have uh, this basic rule here. If I have an even amount of negative signs, I will have a positive answer. However, if I have an odd amount of negative signs, like 1, 3, 5, I'm going to end up having a negative answer. So what you need to do is you solve your problem, whether it is an integer problem or it's, in this case, a decimal problem, and then you're going to go ahead and <coughs> Count up your <coughs> negative signs in the problem, and then uh, go ahead and assign a positive or negative sign depending on what we're looking at. <coughs> so let's first take off, uh, take a look at uh, multiplying. Let's say we have four and seven tenths times negative six hundredths. Okay. Well, when we set up this problem. I would like to uh, do a couple things. Number one, I would first like to estimate. And I would estimate, uh, I would say round to the nearest whole number or nearest integer. Uh, and when you do that, it will give you a fairly decent idea. So I know that 4.7 is close to 5. And as odd as this may seem, negative 0.6 is very close to 0. So I know my answer is going to be close to 0. All right, and since I know that there's one negative sign, I know the answer is going to be negative if it's not zero, which we know it's not going to be zero, just close to zero. Now, the next part, when I set this up, I know with adding and subtracting integers, we get in the habit of lining up our decimals. Well, we don't want to do that here. I mean, it can happen, but that's not what we're trying to do. We're going to line up our numbers and columns as neatly as we can, just like this. Then you go ahead and you put in your decimal points. And then we can go ahead and multiply. All right? So uh, we first do 6 times 7 is 42. Carry our 4. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 4 is 28. All right, now I need to uh, place my decimal point. So before we begin, I'm going to add up how many digits are to the right of my decimals in the problem. I have 1 two, three numbers to the right of the uh, decimal. Therefore, I need to have one, two, three numbers to the right of my decimal and my answer. So the decimal would go right here. I put a zero here. And since we have one negative sign, it's positive times a negative, the answer gets a negative assigned to it. And I get negative 0 0.282. And as we look, you know what, that is pretty close to the answer zero. What we're trying to do is avoid saying our answer is something like 2.82 or 28.2 or 282. We want to avoid making that mistake, if possible. That is why we want to make our estimate. Uh, many times the estimates work out much better than that, but you know what, that's, that's pretty close. Let's try one more multiplication problem. I think if you can get both of these, you get the uh, idea of it. And it's just a matter of trying more difficult ones uh, as you advance in this uh, topic. Let's try a negative 2 and 43 hundredths times negative 4 and 3 tenths. So uh, in this problem, I'm going to uh, first do my estimate. Uh, negative 2 and 43 hundredths is very close to negative 2 times negative 4 and 3 tenths is very close to negative 4. 
So it's going to be close to, well, that's an 8 and a negative, and a negative that's two negatives, which is positive. So our answer is going to be close to a positive 8. Now I can already tell it's going to be bigger than 8, but it's going to be close to it. All right. It may even be closer to 10. We'll, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write down my 2, 4, 3, and then my 4, 3, my multiplication sign. Now I'm going to put in my decimal points. This one goes right here. This one goes right here. Now I can multiply. So 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 4 is 12. Carry my 1. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. And then I'm going to bring a 0 down here because I'm one place over. I'm going to do 4 times 3 is 12. Carry my 1. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 1 is 17. Carry my 1. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. Now I can add. 9 plus 0 is 9. 2 plus 2 is 4. 7 plus 7 is 14, carry my 1, 1 plus 9 is 10. Now, I need to uh, look into where does the decimal point go? Well, I have 1, 2, 3 numbers to the right of the decimal, therefore I have to have 1, 2, 3 numbers to the right of this decimal, giving me an answer of 10 and 449 thousandths, and in this case, I have uh, two negatives, which make it, makes it a positive answer. Therefore, this is my answer. So I, uh, that's why we're going to, whoops, hello. That's why we want to make sure that we uh, do our estimating here. It makes a uh, big difference. All right, so. I almost forgot these. All right, so moving on. Now it's time for division, dreaded division. I know that division sometimes gives people, I don't want to say nightmares, but I don't know, bad dreams. We have a hard time with division. Let's try to make it as easy as possible. What if I have negative 1 and 5 hundredths divided by 0 and 5 tenths? Okay, so again, we can still do estimates. Let's say uh, this one can be uh, rounded to uh, negative 1. And I'm going to leave this as uh, 0 0.5. If I have one whole pizza and I divide it in half, how many halves do I have? I have two. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, and then, because uh, 0 0.5 is the same thing as a half, so if I have two halves, that's what the answer would be in this case too. A negative times a positive is negative. So my answer should be really close to negative 2. Let's try that out. So I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, 1 and 5 tenths, or 5 hundredths inside the box. And I'm going to put 0 and 5 tenths outside. So my divisor is 0 0.5. I'm going to now move my decimal over one spot because, as we know, you cannot divide by a decimal. It's got to be a whole number. I'm going to move this over the same amount of spaces. Put it up here. I can begin dividing. Again, it's very important you have your numbers in their correct columns. Don't get things mixed up. So 5 cannot go into 1. So I'm going to put a 0 here. Uh, 5 can go into 10 twice. So 5 times 2 is 10. I subtract. I get 0 left over. Bring down my 5. 5 goes into 5 one time. I multiply to get 5. And I have 0 left over. So my answer <coughs> is... 2 and 1 tenth, and since it's negative here, it must be negative here. And hey, look, the answers are really close to each other. We've made a uh, very good estimate, and our answer looks spot on. Nice job on that one. Let's go ahead and try another decimal. Let's go ahead and say we have 13 and 44 hundredths divided by negative 3 and 2 tenths. Now I'm going to go ahead and round these to their nearest integer. I'm going to start off with the divisor and say this is pretty close to negative 3. So I'm going to put a negative 3 here. Now since that's a negative 3, I want to make my 13 and 44 hundredths into a number that is a multiple of uh, 3, which would be 
12. That's the nearest multiple. So 12 divided by negative 3, I know, is going to be negative 4. My answer is going to be close to that. So let's go ahead and begin our problem. We have uh, 13, our dividend goes in here, and 44 hundredths, and then divided by our 3 and 2 tenths go over here. Move my decimal over one space because I cannot divide by a decimal. Bring this straight up. I can begin the problem. 32 does not go into 1. I put a 0. It can't even go into 13. I put a 0. It can go into 30, uh, 134. How many times? Well, my estimate was uh, negative 4. So I could start off by saying, well, 4 times 3 is 12. This may work out. So I'm going to put a, a 4 right here. So I'm going to go ahead and say 4 times 2 is 8. And then 4 times 3 is 12. Hey, look, that works out. I'm going to subtract. I can't subtract 8 from 4. I'll have to borrow. Make that a 2. That a 14. I get 6. Bring down my 4. And I have a 64. How many times is 32 going to 64? You got it. Twice. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. I subtract. I get 0 left over. I end up with an answer of 4 and 2 tenths. Uh, since I have only one negative sign, the answer must be negative. And look, they are spot on once again. No, let's do this. We'll move this over here. Here we go. It's done a great job so far. Hopefully this is making some sense to you. We'll do one more just to make sure you're getting it. All right. Our last, last problem, I promise. Where did this 12 come from? We're going to go ahead and put that over here. It's a giant 12, isn't it? That's all right. 12 is over here. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. Um, we have uh, for number 5. We have negative 14 and 896 thousandths divided by negative 5 and 6 tenths. I want to go ahead and make this uh, negative 5 and 6 tenths into negative 6. Nearest integer divided by, well, the negative 14 and 89 hundredths. I want to go ahead and make that into a negative 12. It's pretty close. Negative 12 divided by negative 6 is going to be a positive 2. My answer should be close to positive 2. Let's go ahead and set up our problem. We have uh, 14 and 896 thousandths inside our box. 5 and 6 tenths outside the box. We're going to go ahead and move our decimal over one spot. Bring it up. Okay, 56 does not go into 1. Does not go into 14. How many times does it go into 148? Well, I know that 3 times 5 is 15. Therefore, I'm going to try a 2. 2 times 6 is 12. Carry my 1. 2 times 5 is 10 plus 1 is 11. I subtract. I end up getting 36. So far, so good. Bring down my 9. Now, uh, again, I would say 6 times 5 is 30. I think that's a pretty accurate guess here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do 6 times 6 is 36. Carry my 3. 6 times 5 is 30 plus 3 is 33. Subtract. I end up getting uh, 33 here. Bring down my 6. Now I have 336, which we just found out is if we do a 6 here. And so that's going to get us the exact same number again. And I have l 0 left over when I subtract. And I end up having an answer of 2 and 6600 since they're both positive, or I'm sorry, negative. That means my answer will be positive. I hope this makes sense to you. And uh, keep working, and best of luck.